And inshallah now it's my topic, reality of faqr faqa faqr faqa Faqr basically means starvation, poverty. Faqr means poverty, uh, faqa means starvation. This is one of the principles, one of the core elements of tazkiyah. Food lovers, I'm not doing tazkiyah. But this faqr faqa that's why I want everybody to listen from beginning to end. This faqr faqa this poverty, this starvation is better than any other riches of the world. It's any, better than any type of food that you can fill your stomach with. This is that faqr faqa This is not the really faqr faqa that we might be thinking. So, what is this faqr faqa What is this starvation? Is it the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or it is the kindness and the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is what we are going to learn today. You see, as a Sufi, as a person who is walking in this journey of Tazkiyah, he is always understanding that this is the journey of the soul. We are made up of body and a soul. Right? There are certain things that please our body and there are certain things that are going to please our soul. So I'll be very happy if my body is pleased, right? That is why when there is food, there is Eid, there is festivals, our body is happy because we, want, we get the food that we love, we get the clothes that we like, want to wear, we get the respect, we get the honor, we, let, we get attention that we want, right? So the Eid for the body is when we get the things that please our body. In the same way, there are certain things that please our heart, that, that please our soul. What, what is that that pleases our soul? That you observe the manifestation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your presence of it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that is going to please your heart. So whatever, whenever your heart is filled with the observance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the realization of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your soul is pleased and it's very happy. Right. For, so therefore a Sufi would be very happy and it's a festival of a Sufi when his heart is not distracted and he connects with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Now do we get distracted? We get distracted because of the food. We get distracted because of the clothes. We get distracted because of the dealings around us. That is why when our nafs is not made happy by not giving it to drink, and eat when there is basically starvation, when we starve our body, physically starve our body, then our heart can focus towards that one purpose, that how it has to connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for a Sufi, it's a Eid, it's a festival when there is faqa and when there is faqr. Right? Why? Because when he's not eating, now he can connect and he can think his real purpose and he can connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because now he's not distracted. So that is why the Eid of the body is when he gets to eat and, the drink, and drink and Eid of the Sufi is when he doesn't get to eat and drink. Why? Because now his soul is filled with the nourishment that he was longing for, that he always desired for. And what is the nourishment of the soul? Love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uniting and having a union with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what makes the ruh happy. And when you don't give anything to eat and drink to your nafs, you see the israri ilahiyya. Israri ilahiyya means the divine mysteries. And ma'arif um, ilahiyya means the realization of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All these things, you can feel it more than any other ibadah that you can perform. When you are filled in your stomach and you stand up for the salah, it's a different salah than the salah that you pray when you're fasting, when you have nothing to eat and drink. In Ramadan, you feel that nur in your heart. Why? Because all day long you were not eating. Now you stand up in the taraweeh, you can really feel the nur of the Quran. In the daytime, even if you're not praying a lot, but constantly your heart is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because now you're not eating. Now you're starving your nafs. You're, you're not distracting your soul. And when your soul is not distracting, it's seeing its path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're clearing its path towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the most beautiful moment your nafs is, your ruh is enjoying. So faqr faqa is that. That is faqr faqa in this journey of tasawwuf, in the journey of tazkiyah. 
and that and uh, Sufis they also have they translate this ayat of the Quran in sadaqatu lil fuqara that these sadaqat are for the people who are faqir who are uh, who have poorness who have neediness so now there is two things either you are faqir ila Allah either you are faqir and you are dependent on Allah or you are faqir ila al makhluq or you're dependent on the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, the Tazgah is never, never going to teach you about faqir ilal nas or faqir ilal makhluk. So you will not worry about that. Faqir ilal Allah is the lesson that you have to learn. And once you become faqir ilal Allah, that you show that you are always needy towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then the sadaqat, sadaqat means the offerings. Then the offerings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they lay, they come on your lap because you have shown the neediness towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you're not asking, if you're not begging, you're not getting. If you're always constantly asking the makhluk, you are getting whatever the makhluk can afford. And if you're always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you're getting what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can afford. What is right for you? Right? So, innama sadaqatu lil fuqara. You're not going to get any sadaqa unless you're a beggar. But this is a beggar who is... Uh, divine beggar who is the beggar to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he always begs and he shows that I'm muhtaj ila Allah I'm always in need with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so all gonna be getting from directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the purpose that needs to be accomplished when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives faqru faqa the poverty and starvation to his people and it does come in this path of tazkiyah a lot of people you know sahaba ikram radiyallahu ma'ana ajma'in there was a time they were starving they didn't have anything to eat then the times came, they got so much better off, they got rich in the time of Khaybar. They got so rich, they didn't have to depend on anyone. Some Sahaba got rich in the time of Hunain. Some Sahaba got rich after the uh, Fatah Makkah. So there were different times. And before that, they were not rich. Right? You know, and they enjoyed the time of their poverty than anything else. There, is a, there are so many ahadith. Uh, you know, Abdurrahman ibn Awf, anhu, long after... Oh, then he got so rich that he would have so many types of food on his table and there would be hundreds, hundreds of people sitting and eating. But he still remembered the time when there was not enough to eat and drink. They would, he would still remember the time and he said, one time there's so much food and there's people around him. And he says that there was a time that we hajar namaan Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we migrated with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we were all poor, we didn't have anything. Whatever we have, we left for Allah in the Makkah. We didn't have anything. And our ajr was confirmed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this is the confidence of Sahaba. He said, we did something for Allah, our ajr became wajib on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, min uh, Hamza, Hamza ibn Muttalib, and among them was Hamza radiallahu anhu, uh, and he was better than me. And then he says that, Things have changed. I have gotten what I have gotten. But he never got to see these days. But he was better than me. And then Minhu Musab ibn Umair. And then there was Musab ibn Umair who was in the same journey. He passed away. He didn't get what he got. He lived his life of poverty. He was also better than me. And then Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. He started crying. And then he started crying so much that he couldn't eat. He left. So this time, even in the Sahaba, when they got, saw the both sides, they got riches, they still preferred the poverty. Poverty is that, that you always, uh, with your open eyes, you can see that you are dependent. By all means, there is nothing distracting you. And then the things change. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changed the thing. Because Allah, Allah is the richest of the rich. Allah doesn't get anything when you're poor. It is for our tarbiyah, you know. Okay, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has all the riches of the heavens and the earth. What, does, what is in it for Allah if, he, if I'm starving? What does he get out of it? Nothing. It is for my better self, my betterment, that I go through that process so I connect with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a time when I am, I'm not getting to eat. I'm trying my best. I still don't have food on the table. Now I know the real provider is Allah. Now I know I'm dependent on Allah. When I'm sick, nothing is helping me. I know I turn towards Allah. Nothing, no, I get have no honor and respect in the society. Everybody has rejected me. Now I have to turn towards Allah. Oh Allah, you are the provider. Now that my heart can see the path and I'm connecting with the creator, the creation is getting connected to the creator. This is something which is 
of jewel. This is a treasure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to instill in my heart. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has instilled in my heart and this is going to make my life beautiful. And then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets you riches, then the shaykh says that the moment of the time that is spent showing that you are needy towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the better time than the moment of the time when you think that you are independent and you are not you're self-sufficient. Never you should think self-sufficient. Now that you get the riches, now you get the car and the buildings and the luxuries, now you should still think that I am dependent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like anyone else. So you should, your eyes should turn from your health towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm not self-sufficient because I'm healthy. I'm self-sufficient because Allah has... I'm not self-sufficient. I'm dependent on Allah. I'm eating because of Allah. I mean, so this type of realization should come in your ha heart and that is when you have made the purpose. You know, happens all the time. Your friend sends you food by what Uber Eats. Do you remember the guy who gave you the food? No. Your heart is never on the guy who gave you, who delivered the food to you. Your mind goes directly to the, to the, your friend who has sent the food to you. Oh, mashallah, Junaid Bhai has sent the food to me. Oh, now your mind is towards your, and you're being grateful to the friend who has sent you the food. You know, a lot of times, you don't even remember the face of that delivery guy. You don't know. You order pizza, the guy is going to deliver the pizza. You never would even remember the guy. So in the same way, whatever things and provisions we get in this world, the purpose is in, the, in this path of Tazkiyah that your mind should, direct it to be, should be directed towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This health is coming from Allah, this food is coming from Allah, everything is coming from Allah and these are just the means, you know. Then your, your temperament is going to get better. Somebody mistreated you, this, this honor came from Allah. This person is just a mean to dispense it. This starvation is coming because of Allah, this is just a means. I shouldn't be upset at my household people. If I did not get the food on time, maybe let me check my relationship with Allah. My wife is only a means of dispensing that qadr of Allah. It's the qadr of Allah that is going to always work. It's not the kids, it's not your wife, it's, it's you. Figure that out. So this is the purpose of faqr and faqa. And uh, they say that more you show the ihtiyaj, the shaykh says the more you show the ihtiyaj, the neediness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to give you that divine nur and more realization, the more ma'arifat ma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and more, uh, so it's all about showing the neediness for everything and you know as the hadith says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said ask for your smallest needs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whether it is a shoelace or it's a piece of assault so this is the purpose of faqr faqa may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the real uh, core of this faqr uh, faqa and uh, should become, make us the faqir ila Allah and not faqir ila al-makhluq. Wa akhir da'wana anil hamdulillah rabbil alameen.